on this pious occasion of 101st death anniversary of Lokmanya Bal Gangadhar Tilak, I pay my personal homage as well as the homage of the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute to his pious memory. The Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute is named after Sir Ramkrishna Gopal Bhandarkar. And Lokmanya Tilak was Sir Bhandarkar's pupil. There is a gap of a generation, if not a generation gap between them. Sir Bhandarkar was born on the 6th of July, 1837, whereas Lokmanya Tilak had taken birth on the 23rd of July, 1856. It is a coincidence, one must say, that both of them had taken birth in July and had passed away in August. Sir Bhandarkar was a student of the first batch of the Bombay University. And then he was of the first batch of graduates from that university. And later on, he served the Deccan College, where Lokmanya Tilak was a student. And actually, after uh, his studenthood, the Lokmanya entered into several social and political activities. He founded with his colleagues the New English School. He also founded the Deccan Education Society in 1884. Remember, his age was only 28 at that time. And when the New English School was established, it was only 24. And at the age of 29, he founded with his colleagues, the Ferguson College. And then Tirak slowly became a radical patriot and an activist. And so Bhandarkar and Tirak stood almost as opponents because Bhandarkar was a liberal politician and social reformer, whereas Tirak was a radical one. And that is why while the Bandarkarites, they thought that social, social reformation was more important and necessary than political reformation and freedom. The, the um, radicals, they believed that it was the political freedom that is going to gain everything for us. And that is why that is the first and foremost objective. And it will be followed automatically by social reforms. So there were various actually incidents of conflict between these two parties. Now, I shall narrate one incident to you. One of the volunteers of uh, Lokman Vitrak, who was uh, actually collecting funds for Swadeshi Industries, he approached Bandarkar. And, and Bandarkar drove him out, thinking that he was ultimately Tirak's uh, volunteer. But then he thought that that's not fair. Though there are many points of conflict between the two parties, they are unanimous on the point of Swadeshi industries. So Bandarkar was just about to set out of his house and go to Tirak's house and give that donation uh, to the fund. But in the meantime, Tirak himself approached Sir Bhandarkar and he himself uh, asked for funds and, uh, and Bhandarkar very happily uh, donated rupees five at that time to Tirak. And he said that when I drove out, out the volunteer, then I realized that this is not something on which we stand opposite to each other. And that's why I was going to come to you and give this to you. So such a 
relation, a sweet relation, and also uh, a hot relation was there between them. But with all these uh, things, Tilak had a lot of respect for Sir Bhandarkar and his work in the field of academics. So, Sir Bhandarkar as a reformer or Sir Bhandarkar as an activist was quite different for Tilak. But after all, he was his teacher and a great scholar of uh, Indology, Orientology, and a great personality in academics. Now, this relation between Bhandarkar and Tilak also reflected in the foundation and the working of the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute. It was in 1915 that a primary meeting for establishment of the Bhandarkar Oriental Research Institute took place in Anandashram. And it was decided that exactly after two years, that is on the 6th of July, 1917, that is the 80th birth birthday of Sir Bhandarkar, the Bhandarkar Institute will, would be established in his name. There were two obstacles. One was that Sir Bhandarkar would not allow his name to be given to an institution and would not perhaps like that a living monument would be created in his name. And the second obstacle was that they had to prepare a great deal for that and they had to collect a lot of money, they had to approach the government and things like that. The second thing they did, and it is believed that Tilak was one of those persons who were material in uh, making Bhandarkar convinced to allow his name to be given to the institute. Now he had told the founders of the institute that since I am a seditionist and I have already got punished by, from the government, I am not going to write about your institute, the forthcoming institute, in my newspapers. At that time, Tilak owned two newspapers, you know, Kesari and also Maratha. So from the 6th of July 1915 till 11th of April 1916, almost a period of uh, 10 months, Tilak did not write a single line about the forthcoming institute. And it was 10 months after the first meeting for establishment of the institute had taken place that the Lokmanya published in Kesari the first article about the institute. And that article also is a miscellaneous matter. Patrakaratyacha sputa suchana. So it is not a main matter of uh, the newspaper. Look how careful he was. And then he has appealed there, or rather informed, that Sir Bhandarkar is going to complete 80 years of his life next year. And then a new research institute is coming up in his name. And the institute has an objective of establishing good libraries, as well as doing scientific research, and also training students of the field. He also published an article prior to the date of establishment on the 10th of July, 1917 in Maratha. And that was again a correspondence, not a main article of the paper, but it was an appeal of the founder secretary of the Institute, Sir Dr. S.K. Belvalkar, which said that people should help the upcoming Institute. The same appeal was published on the 19th of June, 1917 in Kesari, Jahir Vinanti, it says. So again, this is not a matter of the main paper. It's an appeal from the Institute. Now, the Institute was founded and inaugurated in this very hall, the Jain Tata Research Hall, 
on the 6th of July 1917, as decided on the 80th birthday of Sir Bhandarkar. Now, all the obstacles or the possible or suspected uh, hindrances, they were no longer there. And now Tirak could openly write about the institute and also he could participate in the working of the institute to some extent. So the working committee of the institute had decided to present to Sir Bhandarkar a commemoration volume. In today's language, we call it a felicitation volume and not a commemoration volume. And they requested the Lokumanya to contribute an article to this volume and he did it. And he wrote on the Chaldean and Indian Vedas, a subject that was quite dear to him. And this sought some new directions about the antiquity and chronology of the Vedas. So he contributed to, the, to this volume. He also became a patron of the institute and patronship of the, of the institute at that time was a thousand rupees. But Tirak became a patron of the institute and he also uh, encouraged his followers like uh, N.C. Kelkar and others to become members and patrons of the institute and they did so. So it was not just sympathy about the wor wor work of the institute, but it was also the participation of Lokmanya hereafter. Now, the news about the establishment of the institute appeared in Maratha on the 8th of July, 1917. And from this news, you can come to know that the institute was established on Friday, the 6th of July, and the inauguration took place at 5.30 p.m. And it names the guests of honor at the time his Excellency Lord Willingham, the governor of the Bombay presidency, as also Sir Bhandarkar and others. And it also informs that the institute has received rupees 15,000 from Sir Dora of Tata, uh, the Dora of Ratan Tata. And also uh, it has been able to raise 25,000 rupees of that time. And also the various donations that were received from the government and the Jaina community uh, and others, people at large, they have been actually enumerated in this news item. A similar news item also followed the next day on the 10th of July in Kesari. And Lokmanya expressed his wish that the institute should excel in its work. After the institute completed the first year, a ceremony took place in this very ceremony. Uh, the Mahabharata critical edition was actually envisaged by the institute. And that news item also appeared on the 9th of July, 1918 in Kesari. And also you find that such news items appeared in both the Kesari as well as the Maratha after that. Sometime during this period, the Lokmanya visited the institute. And after a brief reception, he actually went around the building of the institute and then he inquired whether the hill that is there behind the institute is owned by the institute. And it was replied that yes, the hill is also owned by the institute. At that time, that was the situation. And then he inquired as to why this building was not constructed at the hilltop. Then Dr. S.K. Belwalkar, the founder secretary of the institute, he humbly requested him to explain. And Tilak explained that had the institute been constructed on the hilltop, the scholars would automatically get exercise, physical exercise, while going to the institute. Of course, it was, it was the case that they would go walking. 
then belwalkar was not a not a person who would listen to this quietly he asked as to why the ferguson college was not constructed at the hill top which is behind the ferguson college and that that location was also held by the deccan education society so tilak said that he had proposed this in the governing body of the deccan education society but that resolution could not get passed and that is why the the main building of the ferguson college is uh, is uh, constructed where it is there and it is not on the hill top so i mean the lighter side of it let, let us put it aside but turk was also careful about not only the academic side of the institute but also he had thoughts on various other dimensions i told you some time ago that lokman network was a pupil of sir bandarkar at the deccan college and he had got a lot of respect for sir bandarkar so there is another incident that can be narrated here sir bandarkar used to stay in his bungalow near the confluence of the mula and mutha rivers and he had a practice of taking a morning walk from his place towards the deccan college and there was a certain bench where sir bandarkar used to sit and take rest of course he was 81 years old at, at that time and when tilak got this news he went there and he followed sir bandarkar and when sir bandarkar sat at that particular bench on that bench tilak sat at his feet and he humbly said that sir i could hardly do anything in academics like you and then sir bandarkar replied that had i got indulged in the activities i mean the variety of activities like you i would have got finished long ago so that was the kind of respect that tilak had for sir bandarkar and he was a pet, great patron of not only uh, academic uh, field he was not only a great patron of research but he was also a patron a worthy patron of the bandarkar oriental research institute this aspect of lokmanya tilak is perhaps not known to many people and that is why we made it point to bring it before the people on this pious occasion of the 101st death anniversary of the lokamanya we again pay homage to his memory thank you